You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. And happy Independence Day and celebrating our nation's freedom is topping our Big 7 list of stories for you. Events have been going strong since the stroke of midnight here in East Tennessee and they're really starting to ramp up in the hours ahead. WAT 6 on your side reporter Ella Wales in downtown Knoxville Forest for Festival on the 4th. The Knoxville Festival on the 4th here at World's Fair Park is in full swing now with food, musical entertainment and activities for the whole family. The Mickey Norwood Band kicked off the celebration at 5 and will be followed up with a performance by the Knoxville Symphony Orchestra at 8. Aside from musical entertainment, there are plenty of games and activities for the whole family like cornhole and the splash pad. The fireworks show will be the main event starting later tonight around 945 with the festival ending right after. Maisie Foster and John Van Hooser came for the fireworks show but are checking out the rest of the festival in the meantime. We heard about it on the news and uh, we just thought we had to stop by. It's a great, great turnout, a bunch of people here having a great time. Yeah, we wanted to see fireworks, so that's why we came. There's still time to check out the festival, and it will continue rain or shine. In Knoxville, Ella Wales, WATE 6, on your side. Good turnout down there, Ella, thank you. Some reminders here, if you are heading to World's Fair Park tonight, uh, you saw the games and the food, and just under an hour, the Knoxville Symphony Orchestra will bring out the patriotic tunes for you starting at 8 o'clock. It is the 39th annual Free Pilot Flying J Independence Day concert, and that's happening on the performance lawn. Now, the fireworks display launches right around 945 from the Henley Bridge. Remember, no pets, no alcohol, no tents. It's happening rain or shine, as Ella mentioned, so again, come prepared. Our next Big 7 story for you, Gatlinburg, ready to cap off its almost 24-hour celebration. Uh, the city, you know, every year gets the earliest start possible with its first in the nation midnight 4th of July parade. Matter of fact, behind me here, you're looking at some of the video from this year's edition with the Harlem Globetrotters serving as Grand Marshals. Visitors had the day to rest, recover, enjoy all the other attractions Gatlinburg has to offer leading up to tonight's fireworks finale. Living East Tennessee's Veronica Obey spent her 4th of July there as well. She spoke with the man dubbed the Master Blaster at the top of the Space Needle. We are here at the top of the Space Needle, 400 feet in the air, and fireworks are going to be coming out of every angle of the Space Needle. I'm here with the man that has put it all together, also known as the Master Blaster, <laughs> Dusty Harrell. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Okay, so a lot of work, of course, goes into this, but for those that aren't going to make it out here and they're going to have to consider safety in their own homes when they're doing shows, wherever they may be, mm -hmm. what advice do you have for them tonight? Okay, well, first of all, make sure of your surroundings. Make sure that there aren't any buildings nearby, trees, power lines, things like that. Anything that you have any concern about getting burned, uh, set up away from it. Second of all, when you light your fireworks, back up get away from it, keep distance, even if your name isn't Terry, <laughs> you've seen that video. And then third, when you are done shooting, make sure that you soak all of your fireworks with water. And I personally and professionally use soap mixed with water, a very, very soapy dish detergent water. It helps uh, keep anything from reigniting, catching on fire. Some of your cakes can catch on fire even an hour later. So you don't want that happening when you have it in your garbage or wherever. So that's my big three tips. Good. All right. Well, great. So much good information there, Dusty. And of course, these fireworks that are happening, if you're here in Gatlinburg, kick off at 11 p.m. tonight. You're not going to want to miss it. But again, just remember those safety tips if you are planning to have your own fireworks show. All right. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Veronica, thank you. And WAT6 on your side is the place to catch the Gatlinburg fireworks finale. In case you can't make it to Gatlinburg, we are bringing it to you live tonight at 11 o'clock. So tune in. As Veronica mentioned, staying safe on the 4th, another theme tonight in our Big 7 list for you. Suzanne and Josh Beals know from personal experience how celebrations can turn scary. You know, we first brought you their story nearly a year ago when Josh was severely injured by a firework. Josh lit it and then went back over to it to try to light it again. The firework then exploded, injuring his hand, ear, and leaving pieces of shrapnel stuck in his body. I had an accident with a firework a year ago, and it was a big moment in my life that changed a lot of things for all of us. Our whole family, grandkids, kids, they all, they all look at fireworks different now. People don't realize, like he said, it's a financial strain, it's an emotional strain, it's just a physical strain. 
Josh and Suzanne encourage people to leave the fireworks to the professionals. Law enforcement agrees. For a lot of East Tennessee, non-professional fireworks are not allowed. Matter of fact, in Knoxville and Knox County, for instance, it's uh, illegal for you to have, transport, store, make, sell, or set off a firework without a permit. If you're caught with fireworks, it's a Class 1 misdemeanor with a $1,000 fine and up to six months in jail. The same is true, by the way, for Anderson County. Although in most other counties in our region, including Blunt, Jefferson, Loud, and Sevier, to name a few, you are allowed to shoot off fireworks. Several counties, though, also have a rule that you cannot shoot off fireworks after 11 p.m. So think about your neighbors. And if you want to get a look at other 4th of July events happening across the area, including in Oak Ridge, Norris, Townsend, Pull out your phone right now, scan that QR code in the middle of your screen. That will take you to our complete list of all the events at WATE.com. That way you can find the perfect celebration for you for the 4th of July. Our next big story tonight at 7 o'clock, trying to stay dry while enjoying celebrating the 4th. Holiday visitors in Gatlinburg had to try and dodge the raindrops for a few moments around 4.30 today. And, of course, we're hoping any more showers or storms will just kind of skip the sights of all those events later tonight. The guy who knows, WAT6 on your side, Chief Meteorologist Ken Weathers, he's watching everything for us. So, Ken... How are we shaping up heading into the evening hours? We were just trying to cool it off a little bit out there, Bo. Yeah, still a few isolated showers around most of the activity. They're really a lot quieter than what it was just even an hour ago, and I think that's going to continue to be the case over the next couple of hours. One area that we're really focusing on right now, southern Cumberland County kind of working its way into northern Ray, Meggs, and southern Roan County. Slow mover there could put down quite a bit of rainfall in a short amount of time, but the rest of the region looking pretty good. We're 81 in Knoxville, 80 in Maryville, 79 in Gatlin. Gatlinburg and there's that shower from Southern Cumberland stretching eastward that will continue to fizzle out as well. So really once we're past about the time frame we are now, I'd say about 9 30, 10 o'clock, about the normal time when people would be setting off fireworks, our rain chances have diminished enough that we're doing pretty good across the area. One thing we do have to watch out for though, I do think fog or smog could be a bit of a concern overnight into early tomorrow morning. So if you do have to head back to work tomorrow, keep this in mind as you head out the door first thing in the morning. Otherwise, as we go into the afternoon tomorrow. We're in the mid 80s, so a little bit cooler simply because rain chances are a little earlier tomorrow than what we've seen the past couple of days. I'll explain in the full forecast in just a minute, though. All right, Ken, we'll check back with you. Well, 4th of July isn't fun if the pops and booms cause stress. It's an experience some veterans face, and tonight a local American Legion post is offering a place of refuge. In Sevierville, American Legion Post 104, through its Veteran Assistance Program, is keeping its doors open late to help those dealing with PTSD or other invisible wounds from war. And we should note, this is not just for veterans, but really anyone who has a hard time dealing with the noise of fireworks. The Post will be offering snacks and games, staying open until the noise of all those fireworks starts to calm down. And pets can have a tough time, as you know, as well, from all the excitement outside. Some ideas that we've heard from Young Williams Animal Center keep those pets indoors. And while they're inside, well, turn on uh, some calming music or a fan to kind of mask some of the noise. It's a chance also to have an indoor playtime with some fun distractions while those fireworks are going off outside. Fireworks or fears of fireworks make this the most likely day for pets to go missing here in the U.S. Young Williams also reminding pet owners that if your pet does indeed run off, check their listings online or in person. And also dig through the posts on local lost pets or neighborhood social media groups for people who may have spotted your pet. That's a reminder of the protection offered by having your pet microchipped, making it easier to reconnect when someone finds them after they do indeed run off. And if your Independence Day celebration includes alcohol, please don't get behind the wheel. The Knoxville Police Department telling us yesterday to expect more officers out on the road for the 4th, calling their effort high visibility enforcement. So if you drink, have a backup plan for getting home safely. And here's a good reminder around the holiday or really any time going forward here in East Tennessee, the state's laws on driving a boat while drunk now match those of driving a car while driving under the influence when it comes to fines and jail time on top of the loss of boat driving privileges. Next on our Big 7 at 7 list for you, a July 4th event putting star power into Independence Day. Between 30 and 40,000 people are expected to be at the Patriot Festival happening right now in Pigeon Forge. Headlining the event, along with the fireworks, country music star Sarah Evans. The free concert and fireworks show has been a tradition for almost 30 consecutive years now. Food trucks started rolling in early while people were setting up their lawn chairs for the live music throughout the day. 
we always start off with a salute to our veterans, where we honor veterans and recognize them, the ones that are in the crowd. And then the Pitch and Forge Community Choir will come on after, after that. And then that will be followed by the U.S. Navy uh, Bluegrass Band Country Current. And then we will have the uh, uh, On the Border Eagles Cover Band. And then Sarah Evans will go on about 8.30 tonight. Fireworks will go off about 9.45. As you heard, Sarah Evans performs around 830. It is a free concert and fireworks launch as soon as Evans wraps up. Watch out for a whole lot of traffic, though, in that area tonight. So just be patient. Hey, the town of Farragut also getting in on all the fun, as they always do. This morning's Independence Day Parade brought out the crowds in Farragut, stepping off at about 930 this morning from Farragut High School. Football coach Eddie Courtney served as Grand Marshal as the floats and displays made their way down the parade route. Today's event marked the 35th year for this July 4th event. My grandmother was born on the 4th of July, and when I was a little girl, we would come to the parade every year, and she would come with us. Well, unfortunately, a few years ago, she passed away, and so she can't be here with us today, but today I am wearing her earrings in memory of her, so it's just a very special event for us and um, celebrating her birthday. And ahead of the parade was the Farragut Freedom Run with one mile and two mile races down Kingston Pike. Well, the Museum of Appalachia keeping a big tradition alive today as well. It's really a throwback to a time when Americans just had to celebrate. But when they didn't have access to high-flying colorful fireworks, they did have gunpowder and a zeal for making a big boom. Anvil shoots. Well, take a look. There was. Every 4th of July, the museum uses gunpowder to launch anvils into the sky. Anvil shoots were once a common way for pioneers to celebrate holidays and other special occasions. Traditional way of celebrating our independence. And so, um, you know, that's what we do here at the museum is kind of preserve that earlier way of life and how um, our ancestors lived and people in this region lived. And so we love to incorporate that into uh, special events that we do. So like today we have a lot of uh, traditional uh, traditional arts and um, and trades being exhibited here. All right, let's get another look at that in slow motion for you here. We're slowing it down. The anvil shoot. The Museum of Appalachia, by the way, sent that anvil up into the sky on the hour, every hour from 10 until 2 o'clock today. 